Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'm going to go over the Germany speedrun and show you guys how you could do the speedrun yourself. I'm going to go over all the basic principles, the theory crafting behind the build, and uh, just show you a few of the important points of speedrunning as Germany. So let's get into it here. The first thing about speedrunning is that time is your most important resource. So we're starting off January 1st, 1936. And the more time that goes by, um, the more behind the eight ball that you are. So you want to make as many moves as possible and as many efficient moves as possible in a short period of time. So that's the main principle right there. Uh, first off, we're going to go over the focus tree, which is going to be incredibly important along with the political power buy. Uh, but first, the focus tree, you're going to want to rush down to Danziger War as fast as possible. I believe it's best to go Rhineland, Anschluss, reassert Eastern Claims, and Danzig, of War, Danzig or War right away. And then you transition into Around Magino, Operation Westerbung, which you cannot get after you capitulate the, the UK. And then after that, it's kind of up to you. You may want to go Army Innovations down to Army Innovations 2 because you get bonuses to Doctrine. And Doctrine is one of the best things for land combat, if not the best thing. Um, so that's basically the political power there. And it's very simple. That's one of the nice things about a speed run. It is, it's incredibly simple, but you have to kind of set aside a lot of the traditional logic and knowledge about um, setting up your country and kind of just cut to the basics of what you need to do and stick to that. So it's a very focused and concentrated build, which is why I like it. Okay, now on to the political power buys. You're not going to have time to purchase a lot. And I think what I've learned over the years is if you go for um, political advisors that boost political power gain, um, you're not going to get a return on investment till years later. So basically, Borman here gives you 15% to political power. And so if we've got a political power change... Let's start going Rhineland. That's going to reduce that 1.43. And then you basically uh, add 15% to that. It's going to be a change of like 0.12 a day, something like that. It's going to be very minimal and it's going to take you a couple years to get a return on investment on Martin Borman. So that's why we're not going to go Martin Borman. As you can see here, Adolf Hitler which you get for free at the beginning of the game gives you a political power gain of 25%. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go free trade first because you have all those healthy bonuses to factory output, dockyard output, which directly gives you more military equipment, which is going to be the most important thing in the build is going to be how you function militarily. Okay, so after going free trade, I would pick up Halder because it gains, you gain army out offense of division attack 10%. So that's all divisions. It's not just a specific type of division. Uh, followed by Ferdinand Schnorner, infantry division attack 10%, infantry division defense 15%. The mainstay of your divisions are going to be infantry. So it makes sense, right? And then we'd follow that up with Erwin Rommel, which is going to turn your armor on. And you probably can't get Rommel till Battle of France or even Barbarossa, but uh, he'll be necessary for Barbarossa. We're going to follow that up with Gerd von Rundstedt with army regrouping, recovery rate 8%. Um, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Because we took Schorner and Rommel, we're going to go for Werner von Frisch, which is going to give that division attrition negative 8%. That's going to be much more impactful with no step back. I was still in uh, later versions of the game mode. Um, the next thing that I would do after that is go Hermann Goering for 10% air superiority. 
uh, because buffing air superiority is going to make your army a lot quicker and uh, be able to function a lot better. So I would say supply first, air superiority second in that order. Um, taking a step back, it would actually be uh, division attack first, followed by, uh, you know, logistics, followed by green air. Uh, to simplify it there for you even more. That that would be your priority. Now, ESG, why isn't... What are we doing with the research? Like, why isn't research a priority? It is, but you have to understand that in a speed run, most of your technology tree is going to be absolutely useless. So because you can't get to the juicy technology like the juicy 1942 technology on time, you're only going to be able to do certain things uh, and concentrate your efforts in those things. So what I would say is that the light tank that you get in the beginning of the game, you can just buff with army XP. So you can completely forget about this. Uh, anything in terms of artillery is not going to be very impactful because the guns that you get at the beginning of the game will be able to pierce light tanks. And the mainstay of what you're going to be going after is light tanks. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. What I would worry about is radio is a must so your starting tech is going to be electronic mechanical engineering you'll immediately go to radio and then you'll immediately go to improved radio which turns on your tanks you can put this on your tank defense 45 percent breakthrough 30 percent that is huge you can also put uh the upgraded radar on your ships and that's going to be incredibly important as well the next thing i'd go for is basic machine tools and you'd actually just ignore construction and i know that that's going to be a sore point for a lot of you but we're going to be stealing civilian factories from our opposing countries we're not going to be worried about building them ourselves and i'll get back to that a little later um so what else are we going to go for the technology tree here well you could be really fancy and juggle basic machine tools so leave an, a research slot open and then apply uh, basic machine tools to that research slot and it'll take off 30 days and that'll open up uh, concentrated industry and improved machine tools and that would be your next two buys uh the other slot that you're going to be going for <laughs> if i can find it is going to be the rail guns because the rail guns give you a 10 percent bonus to division attack actually i accidentally put that over what i was already researching so keep a research slot open you're gonna to have to see one of my guides to show how to juggle research slots but that's your basic starting equipment uh, later, you want to transition into getting logistics company for Barbarossa. That's going to be key. And then you could probably transition your other slots into just going infantry equipment because that's going to be the mainstay of your equipment. Uh, let's transition into uh, your production. You don't want to produce a lot of like everything. You want to concentrate uh, what you're producing. So... I always like to produce two AA for the start of the game. And then depending on what your air strategy is, you're going to go with tax or CAS. The tax are nicer to have in the, you know, larger areas, the, the larger naval zones and on the Barbarossa front. So I typically go with ta tax, even though the ground support role is a little bit less. It has less uh, ground attack. So the cast has eight and the ground attack of the tax is only six. The tax can cover a wider area and you can use them more effectively in the Spanish Civil War in Ethiopia to grind air experience. So I think tax have better bang for their buck. And then... What you want to do is a starting production of this. The ships don't matter as much. You just want to make sure that you get all your starting production out. 
and then go with like a cheap destroyer afterwards uh, i think that training ships in the early game is a must how i would do that is take like your small navy over here and just hit the training tab um, and that's all you need to do for that and that'll allow you to upgrade your subs and your destroyers and you can start building like one production line of destroyers that are cheap and one production of subs um well how would you do that esg okay well for the subs you're basically upgrading the engine and you're upgrading the torpedoes to torpedo two this would be a good speed run um, sub for going across the Atlantic and high castling the USA. And then in terms of getting meat shields out, your destroyers, uh, what you want to do is basically just like remove these slots, maybe upgrade the AA and um, maybe just keep the torpedoes the same, depending on what you feel that you need. You could always get uh, better uh, radar or just keep it very cheap like this. It only costs four XP. You should be able to get that from this fleet that is is training um, but the cheaper sub so that was 1100 and so just a little cheaper but the cheaper su uh destroyer rather is what you want to go for as a meat shield for your navy you don't want to lose your capital ships okay other aspects of the speed run let's go to construction here all sieves all the time do not build in your Reich's Autobahn areas because this is all going to be 100 infrastructure, which will pop these military factories out quicker. So what we're trying to do is get sieves from countries that we conquer while building mills ourselves in order to feed our military production, which will then will be able to snowball off of and um, you'll be able to get the 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 fastest uh, conquests by using this method. Uh, that being said, when we start attacking other countries, the AI will prioritize uh, killing your infrastructure. What you wanna do is take this off and just repair stuff. Just repairing your infrastructure is way better than anything else that you can do, is what I found with No Step Back. Now, the other thing that you wanna do is join the wars in Ethiopia and the Spanish Civil War simply by sending volunteers. Send those tax down there. Don't send anything but tax. Send two 80s. These two right here. Because that's going to be perfect. Uh, they'll allow you to send 160, but they won't allow you to send more tax than that because we will not be sending ground volunteers to those wars. We're just going to be sending the tax to get the air experience. Um, so we'll be doing the same for Spain and just simply um, send those air volunteers. That's all we're doing. And if you need to take them away from Spain because you're gonna attack Poland, then do that. Don't worry about the Spanish Civil War at all. Uh, in terms of officer corps stuff, you're gonna wanna stay on mobile warfare. So you're gonna go down the right side of mobile warfare, right to right. It's going to be the best. The other thing is your doctrine. Just stay with battlefield support, rushing uh, the ground support here and the ground support here. Um, you just want to ignore strategic bombing. Strategic bombing is going to be detrimental because you're going to be taking vast quantities of land. You don't want to bomb it to the ground and then have to repair it. Uh, so you just want to that that's the key to the air doctrine is going to be the ground support role. The upgrades on your tank and your aircraft are going to be incredibly important. Tank upgrade prioritizing three man turret close support gun before you go to war. So you get that as soon as you as you can. You should be able to get that right after you get Rhineland and then just buff your soft attack. Don't think about it too much. You know, as you get army experience, you can buff this stuff. Um, so this would be good. Three-man turret, radio first. Close support, 
uh, is a must as well. So I'm sorry, you're going to go close support, three man turret, radio. You should be able to do that all at once. And then all the other thing is ancillary to that, and you could just build over time. Okay, in terms of air, your fighter, you want to upgrade engine first. And then reliability, just keep it around 80%. Range is nice to have. Weapons would be nice to have, but your reliability often takes a hit. But just w engines first. Uh, tax already have a lot of range. You don't need to worry about that with tax. You need to worry about the speed. How many air missions are they able to accomplish? And the agility. That's to the two hit roll. Can they hit anything? Are they agile in the air so they're able to maneuver and actually hit things? And then make sure your reliability is high, followed by bombing, which is going to increase their ground attack. So in that order. And that's going to be it. That's the main tenets of the speed run. Um, some other little tips. Don't uh, do anything with MIFO bills. Don't worry about MIFO bills. Your Navy. You're just using for amphibious landings. So combine your Navy into one big boy Navy. Put them out in the English Channel. Make your amphibious landings as quick as possible through as, as few tiles as possible. And then only hit the naval support mission. This is new to no step back when you're ready to invade. That's what I found. I was surprised when I hit the naval. I used to just queue that up and uh, just attack whenever because it wouldn't matter. But I lost like my whole Navy doing that. So you got to make sure that you have green air in your sea zone in the channel for a while and that you're tagging their, the English Navy, that you're just tapping them all over the place to where they look weakened to where you're going to be able to cross. And then you got to be Johnny on the spot, all air in one zone. Concentrate your air. Concentrate your armor. It is like real life. No step back, turned off armor a bit. It's still marginally a better deal than just infantry, in my opinion. And uh, if you follow all that exactly, you're going to be able to speed run like you've seen me do. I've uh, been able to cap the allies, USSR, USA by 1939. No big deal. If I worked on it more, I could probably get to 1938 uh, with no step back. I have not been able to do that yet. It's been a 1939 um, conquest. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining me with this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and I'll see you on the next one.